Romans chapter 6 speaks of the colossal change that has taken place in the believer, a change in identity so stark that in Romans 6, 1 through 14, Paul uses the language of life and death. And in Romans 6, 15 to 23, he uses the language of bond slavery and freedom. Now the key to chapter 6 is to compare Romans 6, 1 through 14 and Romans 6, 15 to 23. There are, in fact, seven points of direct parallel between them. One, both sections are prefaced by the principle that God's grace is greater than our sin. Two, both sections begin with the same question. May we sin in light of God's grace? Three, both sections answer that question with a strong, may it never be. Four, both sections then ask the probing question, do you not know? Five, both sections prove that we are freed from sin in 6, 7, and 6, 18, and 22. Six, both sections lead us to make the same basic decision regarding the members of our bodies. Present them to sin no longer, but to God. And then seven, both sections argue about the monumental change in our identity based on two very powerful images, baptism of the Spirit in 6, 1 through 14, and bond slavery in 6, 15 to 23. So why did Paul write this in parallel form? To tell us one truth from two different perspectives, two sides of one coin. The truth is that our identity changed forever at the moment of conversion. We were completely and eternally identified with Jesus Christ. Now the first passage, Romans 6, 1 through 14, speaks of God's sovereign work in us at the moment of conversion. By the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God identified us with Jesus Christ, uniting us with Him to, in His death to sin and His resurrection to eternal life. That is what God did in placing us into Christ. Our role was a passive one in that text. But the second passage, Romans 6, 15 to 23, speaks of the active role we play at the moment of conversion. We made a conscious choice to identify ourselves with Jesus Christ, choosing to be called Christian. We actively gave him our life that he might live his life through us, thus choosing to make ourselves bond slaves of Jesus Christ, obedient for life. Thus, Paul uses a parallel structure because he describes our changed identity at the moment of conversion, looking first at how God identified us with Jesus Christ through baptism, and looking second at how we chose to identify ourselves with Jesus Christ through bond slavery. This is the mystery of conversion, the change in our identity revealed. It is a sovereign choice and act of God to identify us with Jesus Christ, and at the same time, it is a conscious choice we make to identify ourselves with Jesus Christ as our Lord and Master forever.